Okay, we're going to begin our discussion on the chain rule, uh, which is the most important differentiation rule, because it tells us how to differentiate the composition of two or more functions. There's really two parts to the chain rule, and uh, we're going to just do part one today, the easier of the two versions, and then in part B we'll talk about the more subtle one. Anyway, let's suppose you have a function f of x, capital F of x is f of g of x. g of x would be considered the inside function, um, f would be the outside function. And what the chain rule says, if you want to differentiate a composition, f of g of x, the way you do it is you, first of all, find the, take the derivative of the outside function, f, f, so you get f prime, but evaluate at the inside function. Keep the inside function fixed. Don't do anything to it. And then on the next step, multiply by the derivative of the inside function. That's how it works. So let's look at a simple example. Uh, to differentiate this is the composition of two functions. If you think of this as f of g of x isn't the inside function x squared plus 5, and the outside function uh, would be the square root function, or we'll, we'll say f of u equals u to the 1 half. So what does the chain rule say? Well, you start off by taking the derivative of the outside function. So take the derivative of the square root function. It becomes 1 half. But you keep this as g of, e, g of x. You keep this fixed. So it would be 1 half times g of x to the negative 1 half. This is your f prime of g of x right here. Then you multiply by the derivative of, of, of g. So this becomes g prime. So it's f prime of g of x times g prime of x. There it is. You can simplify it by canceling the twos and bringing down the negative exponent and then calling it a square root. Let's do some more. Here we go. Here's another one. Uh, suppose you have this one. Uh, wouldn't the inside function g of x be 2x cubed plus 5x? And the outside function, you can call it f of u, would be u to the tenth. So the chain rule says you start off by taking the derivative of the outside function, so it becomes 10. Think of it like this, folks. Bring down the 10 multiply, so it's 10 times this expression g of x to the ninth power, and then you take the derivative of what's inside. You don't take the derivative of what's inside till the very end, right? So this becomes a 6x squared plus 5. Now sometimes there's some simplifying, not on this one, this one's pretty straightforward. I don't think there's anything we can do to this one. You can just leave it like that. Let's do some more. This, is, this can be thought of as the composition of two functions. y equals the sine of t. Wouldn't the inside function be G, g of t equals 3t, and the outside function would be sine, sine of f of u would be sine of u, the outside function. So the derivative is the derivative of the outside, so it would be cosine, evaluate at the inside, cosine of 3t, then you multiply by the derivative of the inside function. And so it's cosine 3t times 3, which can be written as 3 cosine 3t. Now this one here, uh, it looks like a product rule, doesn't it? it? Uh, it turns out a lot of situations, uh, you, you, you'll be using the chain rule as a consequence. Within other rules, you'll use the, the chain rule. Like, so we're using the product rule, but inside of the product rule, we're going to be using the chain rule. You'll see what I'm talking about here. Product rule says you, you leave the first one the same, multiply by the derivative of the second. Well, the second happens to be a composition, right? So the derivative becomes 3, bring the 3 down, times this expression to the second, then you take the derivative of what's inside. See, I just took the, I just used the chain rule there when I, when I multiplied by 3. That's half of the product rule. Now, plus, you take the derivative of the first. Well, the derivative of the first is going to be 4 times x squared plus 1 to the third. And then you multiply by the derivative of what's inside. So you use the chain rule there, too. And you keep the second one fixed. Uh, sometimes there's a lot of serious factoring here. You can take out the greatest power of x squared plus 1. This has x squared plus 1 to the 4th, this has x squared plus 1 to the 3rd, so take out your x squared plus 1 to the 3rd. This has 3x plus 5 squared, this has it to the 3rd, so I think you can take out 3x plus 5 squared. If you do that to the first one, you still have a 9, and I think you have one more power of x squared plus 1. If you take those out from the second one, though, I think you have an 8x, and I think you have one more power of um, 3x plus 5. So then inside these square parentheses, if you multiply that out, you can combine those. So, that, so there's your final answer. x squared plus 1 to the third times um, 3x plus 5 squared times the quantity 33x squared plus 40x plus 9. Here we go. Now this one is kind of interesting. This one is actually, if you think about it, isn't this really three functions? Think of it like this. 
if you start off with x, don't you first get 3x? So there's one function that gives you 3x. Then don't you take the cosine of that? So there's a second function that takes the cosine of 3x. And the last function, the outside function, would be taking the sine of that. So there's really three functions here. The outside function would be the sine. So the chain rule would then be, okay, you take the derivative of the outside function, so you get the cosine, you keep this fixed, re remember that. So it's the cosine of cosine 3x, but then you take the derivative of the inside function. Well folks, the derivative of cosine 3x, you gotta use the chain rule on that. So you get negative sine 3x, and then you pick up times the derivative of what's inside of that. So I'm using the chain rule a second time to give you three. We use the chain rule once to get negative sine 3x, use the chain rule a second time to get the three. Um, so now you can just re rewrite it. I move the negative three in front, basically. All right, we've got time for a couple more here. Some of these problems can get rather involved. They get a little sneaky, too. This one can be kind of sneaky. Do you understand tangent squared of x? Uh, tangent squared of 3x, I should say. Again, that's really tangent of 3x squared, isn't it? That's what that notation means. So again, you really have three functions here. The outside function is the squaring function. What happens to poor old x? You multiply it by 3, right? So you get 3x. Then you take the tangent of it, and then you square, finally. So there's actually three functions. So if you follow what I did last time, you may be uh, su suspicious that we may have to use the chain rule more than once here. And the answer is yes. So what is the derivative going to be? The outside function is the squaring function. So it's 2 times the tangent of 3x to the first power. Now you take the derivative of the tangent of 3x. That's, that's the chain rule. Tangent of, derivative of the tangent of 3x is secant squared 3x. Ah, but then you have to take the derivative of what's inside of that. And the derivative of what's inside of that is 3. So that's, what, that's why you use the, the, um, the chain rule twice. Uh, you can multiply the 2 times the 3 and get 6 and move it in front. Leave us to sleep like that. Okay, I think we have time for one more. This last one looks like the quotient rule, doesn't it? Remember, I always love the quotient rule. Remember I told you why I love the quotient rule so much? But anyway, um, if you were to use the quotient rule on this, you would write it with a, a rational exponent. And then when you use the quotient rule, you get the bottom times the derivative of the top, which is 2x, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. Now, of course, that's going to be a power rule, but I think you're going to have a chain rule also, because this is the composition of two functions. So when you differentiate the bottom, you get 1 half times x squared minus 1 to the negative 1 half, and then you take the derivative of what's inside. That's the chain rule right there. Now comes the hard part. When you, when you simplify this, look at what I do next. I take the negative exponent, I move it down to the, to the denominator of the numerator. Now the twos cancel and I have x to the third. So this is where I am right now. Now to simplify this, I need to get the common denominator on the numerator. So this is gonna have to multiply on top and bottom by x squared minus 1 to the 1 half power on top and bottom here. When you do that to the top, don't you just get x squared minus 1? But on the bottom, you get the common denominator of x squared minus 1 to the 1 half, which is what we have here. And again, that's still over x squared uh, minus 1. So what we're going to do next is we're going to multiply out the numerator here, and we're going to flip over this denominator and multiply it. So that's what I did over here. So anyway, uh, I think you can combine the x cubes, which gives me 1x cubed, minus 2x, and on the bottom, what is x squared minus 1 to the 1 half times x squared minus 1? I believe you can add the exponents. That's where I got my x squared minus 1 to the 3 halves. Alrighty, well, uh, next time we're going to get into the chain rule in more depth. We'll look at the version 2 of the chain rule. We'll see you then.